The Word of God has often signified this collection of 66 books and letters gathered together and bound into two testaments handed to us as the Bible. And there's good reason for that. The scriptures themselves talk about the word of God a lot. Psalm 119, your word, O Lord, is a lamp for my feet, a light unto my path. Or maybe Isaiah 40, the grass withers and the flowers fail, but the word of our God endures forever. Even Jesus regularly talks about the word of God. He talks in Mark 7 about how we can nullify the word of God by weighing it down with heavy burdens we put on each other. He speaks about how blessed we are when we hear the word of God and then we obey it or we live it, we follow it. So the word of God is in itself a very common idea within the word of God. However, in all those references, you might see a subtle nuance here because they are each of them in our Bible, and they all refer to the Word of God, and yet they all seem to be referring to something other than themselves. When the psalmist writes, your word, O Lord, is a lamp to my feet, he's not talking about the words that he just wrote down. I mean, that would be a little arrogant. It's a nice poem and all, I really appreciate it, but no, he's talking about something else here, right? In fact, every single time you come across a reference to the Word of God in the Bible, you will find that the writer is speaking about some other word other than their words. Take Paul's words in 2 Timothy. One of the most famous lines about God's Word anywhere in God's Word. He says, all Scripture is God-breathed. Now, what does all Scripture mean here? Well, it certainly doesn't mean that this line he just wrote is God-breathed. The New Testament didn't even exist when Paul sat down to write a letter to his boy Tim. And he certainly never imagined his letter catching on the way that it did so that it would eventually be considered Scripture itself when he was writing. So Paul is referring to the Hebrew Scriptures, reminding his protege Timothy to study them diligently. Okay, so there it is. Is that it? That's the answer. The Word of God is the Old Testament in our Bible. We should all give up shellfish and follow the Levitical law from now on. Well, no, because what you find in Scripture is that the idea of the Word of God keeps evolving. So the psalmist may have the commands of God, the law, or we call it the Torah in mind. And Jesus speaks of the law and the prophets and not one word falling away. Paul says, All scripture is God-breathed. That means he's adding the ketuvim, or the writings, to the law and the prophets. But by the time of the early church and the book of Acts, we also start to get references to the story of Jesus now also being called the word of God. So Acts 6, the word of God spread. And the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Or Acts 8, When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to go and see them. Or Acts 11, the apostles and the believers throughout Judea heard that even the Gentiles had received the word of God. Now, all of these can't just be references to the Hebrew scriptures because all of these stories are about people converting to the way of Jesus. And they can't be references to the New Testament as we have it, because that doesn't exist yet. It's actively being written when these words were written. Instead, just like we see all through Scripture, this term, the Word of God, refers not just to some specific book on the shelf, but to the ongoing, unfolding story of God alive in the world around us. From the moment God spoke the universe into existence to when God handed the law to Moses, to when God communicated through the prophets, to when God came and was born and lived and died and lived again, to when God's Spirit animated and moved the good news of Jesus out and into the world through the church. All of it, the entire Bible, is the story about the Word of God. And again, the Scriptures are not confused about this. Paul says in Colossians that the image of the invisible God, 
the divine reality that has existed from before there was anything, that invisible truth is now present in history because, quote, all the fullness of deity lives and breathes in Jesus. Similarly, the writer of Hebrews says that the life of Jesus is, quote, the exact representation of God's character. The image here is the idea of a coin that's stamped or pressed into metal. The writer is saying that looking at Jesus shows us exactly what God is like. Never, anywhere in Scripture, do the Scriptures came that kind of clarity for themselves. They point uniquely to Jesus that way. So, all through Scripture, you keep hearing this term, the Word of God, pointing at something else, the larger story of God, present and unfolding, but now in the light of Jesus... And looking back at the love and the selflessness of the cross, the church starts saying things like, actually, I think that was it. The divine has always been speaking. We can trust that God always will, but now God has said everything God needs to say. The word was with us. 